Hey, 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 YouTube. Back for July's comic haul. And my trip to Heroes this month was a productive one. Uh, they gave me my stack, and I was like, it's got some good thickness on it, right? So I was pretty pumped. So let's get right into it. First up, a couple of issues from the ongoing Ninja Turtle series, issue 117. In this one, the Battle of the Bands finally happens. Jenica leading the... Uh, her own band uh, that she cobbled together with some fellow mutants, dubbed Created in Darkness, takes on Bebop and Rocksteady's band, and uh, Jenica's band goes first, and they crush it, and Bebop and Rock are like, we're not even going to try and beat that, and they get out of town. And as the issue rolls on, um, Karaya is finally well enough to get out of uh, Mutant City, and they call a truce with the Turtles, with the Splinter Clan, and uh, future Lita travels back to her time and takes uh, T Toka and Razar with her um, so they won't be a danger and uh, and then all the, all the, after all that's happened and the mutants are back in their normal uh, way of life uh, they all start making up with each other for for the tensions that had gone over, on over the last little while and overseeing all of this is kind of a ghostly apparition of what looks like a ninja and uh, we, we get a bit of uh, a glimpse into this fellow uh, right at the end of the issue Next is issue 118, and in this one, this one's entirely focused on that apparition we saw uh, at the end of the last issue, and it takes place a month prior to the events of that, la that last issue, and uh, this apparition is actually Oroku Saki, the Shredder, and uh, at first you kind of think, oh, he's going to be bad, but he's not. He's been, uh, when Splinter died, he asked Oroku Saki to look over his family, and so... Um, he, he's out at the farmhouse where Mikey lost his cat, Clunk, for a while. Orokusaki helped get the cat back. That's how they got the cat back. Um, and future later, that's when she comes out and she sees Oroku and she's like, oh, keep on doing these little things and and um, you'll make good with the turtles because he's really afraid they're just going to think of him as only an enemy, right? So, so for the rest of the issue, it's just sequences of him helping all the different members of Splinter Clan uh, unknowingly with, with certain little things that uh, may have gone wrong if he hadn't intervened sort of thing. And uh, and that's pretty much the entire issue. And it ends with a bang when when April sees Baxter Stockman uh, sending away some of the Slithery, the big mutant uh, serpent monster that ravaged the city. Um, some of its eggs he's transporting somewhere and she tries to call foul on him and he's like, uh-uh-uh, and he sicks the slithery on her, and she runs through the sewer, she gets attacked, she gets wounded, and she shows up in Mutant Town at the dojo, and everybody's like, April, what the hell? And it's like, it's Baxter, right? So then it looks like there's going to be a battle coming up in the near future between Baxter and the Turtles. Awesome. Next up is a massive whack of Transformers comics, and first up is the Transformers and My Little Pony, The Magic of Cybertron, issue 3. This one's again split into two shorter stories. In the first one, um, uh, two of the ponies uh, go up against Soundwave, and uh, he's trying to capture them for Lord Megatron, even though Megatron is under the influence of King Sombra, uh, as is many of the Autobots and Decepticons and some of the ponies as well. And uh, they get into this battle where they both uh, shoot, uh, battle with sound back and forth because you know sound waves all about the sounds and whatnot and the espionage. Um, and d there's a pony that's like a DJ, DJ Scratch and Snatch or something like that. And uh, they battle back and forth with sound, and in the end, they kind of come to a truce uh, that they may should maybe work together to write things with uh, this brainwashing thing. And in the second part, um, Ratchet is is. Uh, trying to find a way to to negate the brainwashing, and uh, so him and another bot, I forget who it is, um, yeah, I forget who it is, uh, or no, no, it's him and the, one of the ponies, they're, they're trying to find a way to do it, and Ratchet's doing some gadget experiments to find out, and he ends up catching Knockout in, the, in a net. And Knockout is kind of a dubious, kind of shyster, kind of... He's not really affiliated one way, I don't think, with either faction, but he's kind of he's kind of like Swindle, right? He's kind of out for himself and weaselly, right? So then Knockout um, agrees to help. Uh, well, he's kind of coerced into helping Ratchet and this pony 
um, test it with their gadgets and see if they can negate this uh, brainwashing. And uh, and along the way, the pony's like, Cybertron is whack. And he's like, no, you haven't seen all the sites. So Knock Knockout takes them on a little tour. And at the end of the tour, they encounter some of the bots, including Breakout uh, or Breakdown, I think it is, um, who uh, Knockout eventually talks down out of the brainwashing and they have some success there. So that's how that ends. Next up is Beast Wars number five. In this issue, Dinobot has been taken into custody by the Autobots and he's in his cell and Optimus Primal is kind of talking to him like, I don't trust you, why do you want to be a Maximal? I don't believe it, right? So then Nyx comes in and says, I'm all repaired now and I'd like to talk to him. Um, so then Optimus Primal leaves. Nyx starts talking to Dinobot about, why did you rescue me? You're a Predacon, you're mean. And then so they start talking, a, get into an in-depth conversation about the Predacon philosophy and why he turned against Megatron to save her and stuff like that. And uh, in the meantime, Megatron and, and his Predacons have um, gotten free from their ship and they're marching on the axle on the Autobots ship and, uh, and they have all their, all their troops out. The Autobots notice this, so Optimus Primal, Cheetor, and Rhinox, I believe, uh, the three of them go out to meet them, but they're vastly underwhelmed. So when the battle starts, you know, they're getting knocked around. So then Dinobots, like, you gotta let me out, they need help. And Nyx is like, mm -hmm. and finally she lets him out right at the end of the issue and he charges into battle. So I think the next issue is gonna be a, a bit of a reckoning between Dinobot and Megatron, which will be awesome. Next up. Transformers, the subseries called Escape number four. In this one, it starts with um, uh, Diatlas, uh, one of his followers or whatever, say, I found your sword. And Diatlas is like, I don't need that anymore, man. I'm peaceful, right? And we all know that's where that's been. Um, so then after that, um, Wheeljack and a couple of his allies uh, go to Dark Mount and meet with uh, Straxus as, as they want to use it as a refuge from all these these uh, creatures and bots that are trying to flee Cyber Cybertron and um, and uh, Straxus is like well I gotta worry about my own people from Dark Mount first so um, and and they view they witness what's going on within Dark Mount and what Straxus has going on and Wheeljack's like I don't trust this guy there's something off here and uh in the meantime, two Decepticons are, are on some business for Shockwave trying to track down the Insecticons and use this acid gun against them. They get attacked by uh, who looks like Kickback and they defeat him after a bit of a fight. But then all of a sudden, a whole horde of Insecticons start chasing them and they're like, we're in over our heads! And they start running. But then the whole swarm of Insecticons uh, streams towards Dark Mount where Hound and the other Autobots have just arrived to see what's going on with, with the whole situation. And... Uh, with the oncoming threat, Diatlas finally says, I can't let all these people suffer at the hands of these Insecticons. Get my sword. So we're going to see Diatlas go into battle next month, I do believe. Next up, the regular Transformers issue, uh, series, issue number 31. And in this one, um, Cyclonus is in the Decepticon, not Decepticon Med Bay, but somewhere, where, remember, after the Titans fell and crashed, um, they found that one bot sticking out uh, of the wreckage. Uh, um, maybe that was last month or whatever. Um, so, and her name was, uh, oh God, what was it? Provoke, that's her name. Um, and so Cyclonus is trying to see, like, is she gonna be okay? How is she like this, whatever? And the, the doc is like, I'm gonna do my best, right? So um, after that, we, we witness Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus talking about, you know, you released Pyra Magna? Like, she's got some crimes against her and stuff like that. Um, and Optimus Prime's like, you know what? The Autobots have made mistakes, so has she. Um, let's all try and be better together and face this threat our own, on our own sort of thing. Um, so then one of uh, Pyra Magna's followers, Jumpstream, um, is working with Perceptor um, as Perceptor has um, stolen this technology from Shockwave. You know, he was trying to harness Skywarp's ability to, to, to teleport and, and trying to harness it and, and get it at to be able to use it at his command for anybody and use it as a device, right? So Perceptor has got his hands on this technology and Jumpstream wants to test it out for him. And she ends up going kind of crazy and blah, And uh, eventually she starts getting warped all over the place into the midst of the Decepticons, into the midst of the, De the Insecticons. Um, and then finally uh, into Iacon, but almost like an alternate reality kind of Iacon where she meets up with Sunstreaker and she's like, thank God, the Sunstreaker, but this isn't your normal Sunstreaker. And he takes her as kind of a captive to their, uh, the Lord of Cybertron, I think they call him. And it looks like Megatron, 
but he says, I am not Megatron, I am Exarchon or something like that. Um, so it's kind of like the, one of these alternate reality kind of storylines, right? Which, which, uh, are always, always come up in most series eventually, uh, to, the whole time space continuum, alternate realities, wormholes, all that shit. Uh, most sci-fi series use that at some point, right? Now this one is the 2021 Transformers Annual, which I was delighted to see because it's pretty thick and I had no idea there was such a thing. So in this one, it's it's totally out of the realm of the characters we've been looking at uh, in, in all the previous issues. It's the Technobots. Um, they are going to a um, the Black Hub, which is like a space trading kind of station, um, or sorry, the Hexagon they're going to, um, which is like a, a space faring station uh, kind of stop sort of thing for, for all types, and it's under the command of Thunderwing, I believe. Um, so the Technobots arrive, and they're, they're, they're there to check things out and do some specific task. Um, but they're also, they're suspicious of Thunderwing. And at, when they get there and they see Thrust, Dirge, and Ramjet hanging out with them, they're like, they're even more dubious. And then Bludgeon shows up, who's also under Thunderwing's control, and he's kind of a criminal, right? So they're all like, meh, meh, meh. And, and things are tense, and it's like almost, you, you can tell something's going to break, right? Um, and eventually, um, how they got to the station was they were aboard the Titan named um, Lodestar and uh, Lodestar's companion or whatever they're called, uh, Lightbright, that's how they got there. And uh, once on the station they find out that uh, one of the other Titans, Vigilum, um, who's been missing and who is kind of a little out of it, uh, he's not himself, is docked with the station and eventually uh, after the fighting starts, Bludgeon, they start battling Bludgeon and then eventually Arachnid, um, enters the fray and a big battle ensues in this weird area that has a combination uh, technology within it and and the technobots get blown up within it and that's how they gain their uh, uh, combiner ability to form into Computron so Computron climbs out of the wreckage right which is kind of cool uh, but eventually Vigilum takes off after all the fighting starts and Lodestar has to chase him down and, he, and he's firing all sorts of missiles at her and stuff. So basically in the end, it's a, a face off between these two Titans and, and Lodestar and Lightbright are like, you know, don't make us destroy you. Don't do this. Chill. Everything's going to be cool. Right. But Vigilum can't help himself and he's forced, uh, they're forced to, uh, to destroy him. So that's the end of a Titan right there. And that's kind of how it ends with a, a bit of a, a sad end for Vigilum the Titan. And uh, that's all of the Transformers. Last up, two G.I. Joe issues, and these are really cool, especially the covers. I really like the covers on these ones. So, regular ongoing series, as usual, number 282. Um, in this one, if you remember the Snake Eyes storyline where, where Cobra captured them, and then the Joes basically mobilized their entire force against orders not to, uh, to go to Springfield and rescue him, and it was a big battle and, and lots of action. Um, the, in this issue, they're going, uh, a, f a few Joes, including Scarlet and Snake Eyes, are going to Washington uh, where a hearing is going on to to investigate why they did this against orders and, and what's going to come out of this right um, so that's that's kind of the gist of the issue but at the same time there's 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 forces in play during this uh, hearing uh, Cobra has placed one of their Crimson Guardman Fred models uh, on the scene and he's going to try and get into this meeting and speak a code word that's going to activate one of the senators that's that's on this hearing uh, who is actually a sleeper agent for Cobra, and she doesn't know it. Um, and uh, the the girl Joe named uh, Sherlock, who lost her arm or whatever in the last issue, um, she is on site, and she's there to make sure nothing bad happens. So uh, Duke and Mainframe are kind of watching things f remotely uh, through cameras of what's going on, so they get in touch with her and say, this guy's trying to get in, something's going on, right? Um, so she kind of tries to defuse the situation and, and let him not get into the meeting, but he does get in um, uh, as, as there's another Cobra agent on site that's there to distract Sherlock. So there's all these layers to it, right? In the end, uh, the sleeper agent isn't activated, uh, but one of the senators, senators, the other senators that was on the take with Cobra, um, the guy, uh, Fred or whoever that breaks in, 
um, ends up snapping this guy's neck uh, so nobody can learn of his involvement and stuff and, and takes off and uh, and you're kind of left in limbo at the end of it like nothing super bad happens to the Joes or anything but uh, obviously there's forces at play uh, from Cobra that, that the Joes didn't really see coming right um, so kind of a cool issue all takes place in a room in the White House or the Senate building whatever the hell it is last one issue 283 of G.I. Joe, and it's all the Lady Joes on the front. Um, in this one, there's a team, uh, so it's somewhere over in Asia, and there's a team, remember in the issue where Al Cabra, um, the terrorist, uh, they were after him? He's the main focus of this issue, they're trying to get at him. Um, so there's a undercover team, Lady J, and a, and a Joe that I, I'm not familiar with, I forget his name. They're infiltrating Al Cabra's um, compound to do business with him and hopefully um, you know get the drop on him or whatever uh, that they're planning on doing and uh, off-site is a team in a van monitoring things that consists of chuckles roadblock and a female Joe I'm not familiar with who's kind of a techie um, so things uh, as as Jay and the other Joe undercover are taken towards uh, the compound things start to go haywire and uh, and they're kind of the the, t the cab driver kind of gets suspicious of these guys and uh and things start to go awry so then chuckles and roadblock um have to get in on the action but but all covers forces have ways to divert them from gaining entrance to the compound so it's kind of uh these two battles that are being waged one inside the compound one outside the compound as they try and uh, take down al cobra and and also keep all of their 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 joes alive right sort of thing um in the end uh, Zarana and uh, Xandar, uh, the two Dreadnought siblings, um, arrive on the Thunder Machine with, with uh, some allies and uh, enter the fray and help the Joes and they all escape on one of their pirate allies, uh, big big tanker ships. And, uh, and in the end it looks like they're going to stand off against each other about the status of a, a nuclear warhead, but it turns out it's all just a bluff and they, they all want to get rid of it and they dearm it and drop it in the ocean and then they all end up having drinks on the boat afterwards. So <laughs> so it turns out these uh, dreadnoughts and whatnot are, are actually allies of the Joes for once, at least in this certain uh, circumstance. So yeah, some really good issues, a lot of reading. Um, that's why it took so long for me to get this uh, video up and posted, but uh, uh, I'm guessing with such a busy July with my issues that August might be a little thinner, but uh, we will find out in a couple weeks, and I'll be back to give you all the juicy details. Toodles.